<laughs> I like you, you're very honest, Ule. I like you too. And actually, so far, I mean, I've conversed with some very learned people, and some very wonderful <laughs> people, but in a way there's always been, dare I say, a professional angle. Whereas meeting you very much <laughs> here in the sauna, I find you very attractive. The ladies and gentlemen know how profoundly lonely I am. <laughs> Conversationally, I'd give you all the time in the world. In fact, you could sit on my face for a fortnight. And I mean that nicely. We can all learn from this. What can we do to assist the self-esteem of our younger brethren who perhaps come from families who don't understand that love is actually unconditional, who come from families that withdraw their so-called love if you aren't sufficiently competent as their ambassadors, <laughs> if you don't ape their shit. <laughs> what can we do for the younger people, Ole? <laughs> Hopefully, uh, I think things will uh, things will get easier as uh, uh, sort of finally a bit of enlightenment about sexuality filters down. Um, it won't be the big deal that it used to be. Uh, I feel quite privileged to have been born into a time, into a place where it, it wasn't so much of a problem. Do you know what I mean? I think we uh, one thing that maybe we can do as a community is stop looking down our noses at each other because we don't. Have Something's yeah. attractive in it, or someone's dead, not got big enough muscles, or don't have enough money, because that's a load of shit, and I hate that. Fantastic. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I'm loving you more and more. <laughs> I find you profoundly physically attractive. <laughs> You've got character written all over your face. <laughs> yeah, you're the sort of person that not only could I love, but I do love. <laughs> I'm also aware that we're living in a capitalist system. But yeah, is giving the LGBT and Q community certain freedoms because they spend money and that got us involved in consumerism. And I think that the capitalist structure, as long as children are being produced that can become soldiers, that's all they really care about. And I said last week, Thule, and I wasn't contradicted, <laughs> what is better for parents of a soldier currently in Afghanistan or Iraq? Is it better for them to deal with their profound bereavement when their 18-year-old son has died, or is it an even worse nightmare that their son might have been sucked off by a middle-aged queen with rotten teeth? <laughs> and I ask this question in all sincerity. Have you got an answer? <laughs> I'm having fun tonight, I really am. <laughs> myself out. Uh, what, what was the question? <laughs> I like the fact you've forgotten it because I think in a way it's irrelevant. We've made a profound connection. You've probably got a partner. No, I don't. <laughs> Would it be okay if I... <laughs> I'm going to draw this part of the show to a conclusion now. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll be back. I do believe in giving value for money. Thank you for your 
humanity. A complete pleasure. And you're on stage, you've got a mic, Uli. Is there anything that you'd like to say to the ladies and gentlemen, because you've given so much? A, a motto, a phrase, something that's going to give us strength to carry on. It's a hard one. I'll tell you what I do sometimes when I feel uh, like I really need to get in contact myself. I, uh, I sit down in front of the mirror and I have a good old fucking proper chat. Uh, I advise you to try it, people. It really works. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, cool. My favourite conversation so far. You're wonderful. Can you find your way down? Look. No, they'll look after you. That's it. That's beautiful. Okay. We're going to have a musical interview now, ladies and gentlemen.